Hello everybody and welcome back to Selwyn. What you just heard was the sound of our chapel bell ringing out for VE Day last Friday. The nation commemorated all those who gave their lives in the service of freedom in the Second World War. And I'm delighted that even though we are dispersed and in these strange times, it's still possible for the chapel to play a part in our lives. And I hope very much that these online services are part of that for you. Today, once again, we have an opportunity to listen to the readings of the day, to hear a short reflection, and to listen to music made by members of the choir in their own homes, and then brought together wonderfully by our Director of Music, Sarah MacDonald, so that they can sing as a choir once again. At the end, we'll have an opportunity to sing a hymn together and for prayer before the final blessing. Wherever you are, once again, we're delighted that you've joined us today. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in whom alone our hearts find rest and peace, reveal yourself to us in this time of worship. Pour down upon us your spiritual gifts and grant that this season of holy quiet may be profitable to us in holy things and refresh and strengthen us to finish that which you have given us to do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, beginning at the first verse. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves, and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Here ends the first reading. Today I'm standing in the Harrison Room. And if that's taken you by surprise, it may be because for decades this room has been known by those who know Selwyn as the new Senior Combination Room, the new SCR. However, it's been renamed the Harrison Room in honour and appreciation of Sir David Harrison, our former master who has celebrated his 90th birthday this week. Sir David has of course been a very strong supporter not only of the college but of the chapel over many years and we are all delighted to join together in wishing him a very happy birthday. And now before we hear our Gospel reading, 
Nick Eaves and Laura Mayo will sing the opening verses of Psalm 31. In thee, O oh Lord, have I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thy knee to me. Make haste to deliver me. And be thou my strong rock and house of defense. That thou mayest save me. A reading from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 14, beginning at the first verse. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place that I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Here ends the second reading. In a moment, today's reflection will be given from abroad by our assistant chaplain, the Reverend Roger Revel. First though, the contemporary composer Gail Randall has given us permission to broadcast today's anthem, her setting of The Call by George Herbert. Published in 1633, the words, Come my way, my truth, my life, echo our reading from St John's Gospel today.
I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you've ever read it, you'll know that John's Gospel is a place where things rarely ever play out straight. Jesus is often talking past his disciples, and they never quite get it right, which is why in John's Gospel things have to be carefully digested. You begin by thinking you know what Jesus is talking about, and then later you discover you don't. This is certainly the case with today's Gospel lection. It's a passage which begins with some very beautiful words. Do not let your hearts be troubled, for in my Father's house there are many, many rooms, a place for all of us. But then, so typical of John's Gospel, things shift. Jesus now says, I am the way and the truth, and nobody comes to the Father but by me. And so a passage which begins with an effusive declaration of God's expansive and inclusive love goes in a different direction. It becomes seemingly exclusive. I am the only way. Nobody gets to the Father but by me. That's a tough statement. It's one which offends our liberal sensibilities. Moreover, the fact that some people have sometimes used those very words like a rock to throw at people only fortifies the unease we might feel when we hear them. Yet before we get too nervous about this statement, there's something to remember. We're in John's Gospel, which means that if Jesus is the one way, as Christians profess him to be, I can tell you this, it's no straight or narrow path. After all, right here in our own passage, we see Thomas the disciple confessing that he doesn't know the way, even after he'd been following Jesus for the entirety of his ministry. And then there's Philip, who blurts out that even though he too has followed Jesus for a long time, he can't see the way for the life of him. Welcome to John's Gospel a place where things are rarely unambiguous, a place where things often have to be thought through carefully and unpacked, including the apparently crystal clear statement of verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When you first hear those words, you might think that Jesus is finally going black and white. He's getting tough, case closed. It's my way or the highway. Ah, but hold your presumptuous horses. Because Jesus didn't say, having the right beliefs about me is the way. And he didn't say, having the right opinions about my teaching is the way. He said, I am the way. He said, if you're trying to get to the Father, that way runs through me, through my teaching, through my person, through my words. Words which are not always easily understood. Words which are sometimes confusing and moving. Words which are ever reaching out to the type of people that we might avoid touching. I am the way. You come to the Father by this way, by me. That's what Jesus says. The upshot is that what Jesus is saying here doesn't necessarily answer our questions so much as raising more questions, particularly questions about what it means to practice the Christian faith. It may be one of the unique qualities of Christianity that it is so delightfully messy and at times ambiguous, though not always. What I'm trying to say is that the faith engendered by the one who calls himself the way and the truth and the life is a large and moving faith. In other words, this Jesus who is the way creates a kingdom that can at times be a bit messy. Yet what we also know is that at the center of this kingdom is a shepherd, a shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep, and not just for sheep who are officially in the fold. Because, as we heard from last Sunday's Gospel reading in John chapter 10, Jesus says that he has other sheep, sheep who aren't necessarily members of our fold. And Jesus also says that he's going to find those other sheep and to bring them in. And so, as it stands, Mr. One Way is actually out and about, busily beating a path to other sheep. We may not know their names. They may not be on the membership list that we keep or the groups by which we identify. Yet Jesus says that in his way, there are many other sheep too, and that he is their shepherd. It comes to this. If you're looking for a text to feel smug about, before you quote this one, before you shout that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, the only one, you better consider the questions that are raised rather than answered by him. When we do that, we might just end up saying with Thomas, Lord, I don't know the way, at least not as well as I thought. So would you show me again? And to that we might add, Lord, forgive us for thinking that your house is small, with just a few rooms and but one door. 
After all, if that was the case, I'm sure that Jesus would have told us. This week on the 75th anniversary of VE Day, we have remembered the time when the sounds of war fell silent on this continent. You're now invited to join in singing hymn 354 from the New English Hymnal, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. In its imagery of the calming of an angry sea, the ceasing of tumult, and God visiting the chaos and bringing life and peace, it seems an appropriate hymn to sing today, both in terms of the ending of war and in terms of the chaos that some of you may be feeling where you are. Let us pray. As we join together in prayer, we continue to remember especially all who are suffering as a result of the coronavirus. We pray for those who are ill and for all who fear for the health of loved ones. We remember those who are unemployed and who are suffering the financial consequences of the current crisis. We remember all who are awaiting much needed treatment, all who are bereaved and those who have died. And we give thanks for all those in hospitals and in our communities who work to support those in need. And as this week we have commemorated the ceasing of hostilities in war in Europe, in the Second World War, we remember all those places where war still rages and we pray for peace. Almighty God, from whom all thought of truth and peace proceed, 
Kindle in the hearts of all people the true love of peace. And guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth. That in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the College Prayer. O Lord, the resurrection and the life of them that believe, who didst enrich thy servant George Augustus Selwyn with thy manifold gifts of grace. Grant that all who serve thee here may be taught by his example to serve in their several callings to the honour of thy name, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance on you and grant you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>